welcome you to our program today. We have a very special guest. His name is Pastor Chris English. He's the pastor of Grace Point Church, uh, and that is located on uh, 3100 Windsor Avenue here in Dubuque, Iowa. And so, uh, Pastor Chris, so good to have you with us yes, today. Yes, thanks for having me. And one great. of the things about his church is that they are, they've reached a very special milestone and that they are celebrating 125 years of That's being good. a congregation, 125 years of God's grace and, right. and ministry and work uh, here in Dubuque, Iowa. And so, uh, Pastor English, how long have you how long have you been serving as a pastor? Uh, Grace Point is actually my first ordained pastor as, okay. as a Presbyterian pastor, so uh, I am just starting my tenth year there. Oh, so, wow. uh, prior to that, I was on staff at a, a few churches, and we actually moved here from Alaska. From, oh, from Anchorage, boy. Alaska, and yeah. I was on staff at two different churches up there over the past uh, 15 years in various um, mm -hmm. roles. So, okay, not my first pastor, first ordained solo. Pastor. Sounds like you've been doing ministry for quite some yeah. time. Yeah, yes. yeah, but yes. then as a, as an ordained minister, right. and here again, you know, all that good work that you did prior to being a, an ordained minister, right. you know, you know, uh, certainly enriching and, and very important. Okay, so you've been an ordained pastor now for 10 years, yes. and you've been serving Grace Point a Church, which is affiliated with what denomination? It is the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. The Evangelical Presbyterian right. Church, okay. Right. And so when you look back over 125 years, has it always been the Evangelical Presbyterian Church? Right. And so, you know, at 125 year history, you have lots of milestones. And one of the most recent major milestones was 2006. And at that point, uh, the, what was Third Presbyterian Church for mm -hmm. the bulk of its history uh, transferred into the Evangelical Presbyterian Church okay. uh, from the Presbyterian Church USA. And so in the American Presbyterian denomination, the Priest USA is a very large, very mm -hmm. large denomination. And, um, that was their primary yeah. affiliation. And then just, just some changes uh, in terms of uh, differences of uh, mission and vision and, and purpose. They felt more at home in a smaller uh, ver branch of Presbyterianism in America. And so okay. of all the options out there, uh, the EPC, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, was the best fit. And so uh, they made that transition uh, in May of 2006. Okay, so that, you know, like you say, a very important time in the was, history yes, of the church. Yes. And so when you think of, you know, the Presbyterian church, you know, kind of, you know, like with Lutheran, you, mm -hmm. you think of Martin Luther, but right. with the Presbyterian church, you have... Is it, John Calvin is, is, the, is the big gun, the big... Yeah, John the, Calvin. The big source, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. and, um, what uh, role did John Knox play in the Presbyterian church then? So John Knox was a, a student of John Calvin for a while, and then he was very uh, pivotal in bringing Presbyterianism to England and then, um, and then uh, America. And so the presbytery of the piece that, was that we were part of was actually called John Knox. And so, um, yeah, so there's another, the... another historian, mm -hmm. a, a, a theological historian that of part of the larger mm -hmm. uh, reformed stream yeah. that, that Lutheranism would fall under. And, yeah. yeah, so now, okay, so 125 years. I mean, that's a long time for yes, it is. A, a church to be together. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm sure you don't have any charter members of the church who are still living, but yet <laughs> hopefully there's been some history that right. has been kept throughout time. And mm -hmm. so being able to go back 125 years, help me, I'm not always the fastest with math, but mm -hmm. what year would that have been then? So that was 1890. 1890 is when yes. the church right. uh, formed, and, and what do you have as far as any historical records, as mm -hmm. far as, you know, kind of what, what were some of the, mm -hmm. the key things that went into starting the church, you know, were there some, uh, I mean, how, sure. did, how did it get started? Right. Um, so in 1875, they started 
uh, it was called the Round House Sunday School, and they actually met in a, uh, a train depot down uh, in the, in the okay. Eagle Point District area. And so, so that's how you get you know, the so Round House. So that's how, yeah, so that's how it got started. Hmm. And then uh, a year later, they be um, the building that they were originally in, Garfield and Statford, is that right? They uh, had a uh, started Eagle Point Mission Chapel. Mm -hmm. And so then it was in 1890 that they were commissioned as Third Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. And so 1890 is the, the mark of a becoming a, a, a Protestant, uh, independent uh, congregation a ch official incorporated church, mm -hmm. but it actually had started in 1875 mm -hmm. in terms of the, the roots. And so that's part of the DNA. And so, you know, churches have their own DNA. They have mm -hmm. their own uh, ethos that's built into its history. And having started as a Sunday school, you can, you can trace mm -hmm. that as one of their strengths throughout the entire 125 plus mm -hmm. year history of it really being, being strong in emphasizing uh, Bible teaching, we're strong grounding in the Word of God. And so uh, of all the ups and downs and ins and outs and changing emissions and vision statements, the, the constant has been uh, Third Presbyterian Grace Point stands on the solid Word of God and equipping its people in, mm -hmm. in biblical knowledge and literacy. Yeah, yeah so it started as a, as a Bible school. Sunday school, yeah. Or Sunday school. Right, right. And was it uh, Sunday school primarily then for, for children or children and adults? Or was it a family emphasis? Or what, what, you know, what did that uh, Sunday school kind of look like? I think originally it was, it was mostly adults, as far as I can okay. remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but tracing that, that theme, that, that strength, that emphasis through the ages uh, as they became a... Um, called Informed Church as part of the Presbyterian Church USA. Uh, one of the areas that grew the fastest was their whole Sunday school program. And so uh, it got to the point where they actually had a bus ministry and they were busing in children from all over the town and they had, I think, hundreds of children. So much so that, that they had the like borrow space at other places around town. And mm -hmm. at that point it became more than just adults. It was all ages. And lots of classrooms. When they were in the building on uh, Garfield, the original building, uh, they was it's an older building, and they mm -hmm. were meeting downstairs, and they were meeting every little space, closets, wherever they could fit a yeah. body. They were meeting just just to equip and teach people in God's word from birth to adult. Well, it just sounds to me like you had people who really had a hunger and a thirst for the word of God, yes. yeah. and so they just started meeting, and they right. the place where they could meet was that the roundhouse uh, in the railroad right. station there. Right. And so as, as they were meeting and having study, it just sounded like more and more people were right. joining them and they were inviting people mm -hmm. and busting them into where now you're looking at hundreds of people and then that's what then eventually then deciding to commission themselves as a church then. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Very interesting. So when you think of like Third Presbyterian Church, am I understanding that right, that they're we're already, you know, there was a first Presbyterian church and a second Presbyterian church. Is, is that the idea there or not? It is. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the best historian, but here's what I know. <laughs> here's, yeah. what, here's what I think I know. Yeah, first Presbyterian, which is down on 17th Street, Presbyterian okay. Church USA. Second Presbyterian was actually West, is actually Westminster, which is over by the University of Dubuque. Okay. And I'm I'm pretty certain that Third Presbyterian was, was somehow launched directly or indirectly from Westminster. Uh, okay, not, so I was wondering if there, if the so other, the, second is. <laughs> the existing Presbyterian right. churches that they didn't help, you know, plant this new uh, church yeah, or get a. Yeah. I know Westminster was the second was Presbyterian church. Was very involved in that somehow. Okay, yeah, right. So right. Second Presbyterian Church was really helpful in trying to get yeah. this upstart, this right. new church started then. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that something? It is, yeah. Yeah, so when you look back at uh, 1890 and kind of some of the things that were going on in the world at the time, well, the Transcontinental Railway had just been built and, 
and so you think of you know our nation as far mm -hmm. as expanding. I think the you know the telegraph, you know, as far as communication from from one it's end of the country to the other was yeah. going on about that time, mm -hmm. and you know just um, a lot of inventions and things in the works, mm -hmm. and you know what the, the society and what Dubuque might have been. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as what they were celebrating, what were some of the concerns, some of the issues of the day right. back then in 1890, and right, uh, yeah, it's 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 very impressive, right? You go have a church like many other in Dubuque that have gone through the World Wars, gone mm -hmm. through the Great Depression, and I know that um, like during the Great Depression era, uh, that was a great time of struggle for everyone, and certainly for Grace Point mm -hmm. and Third mm -hmm. Presbyterian. And I know the, the, one of the other, if you trace the different themes of Grace Point, Third Presbyterian, another really strong thread all through its history, all through its storyline, is really strong women in leadership. And, 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 oh, okay, and so, yeah. Uh, it, it's one of the hallmarks of the church, and still is. And, and so during, that, during those struggling eras when the funds were tight, you had uh, a lot of the women rising up to the occasion and doing what it takes to sell things and raise money and, and carry it through and so. so. The women of the church being really kind of the, the backbone of the church it, and, yeah, and rising ways, up and in, right? into leadership positions yeah. and things like that because right. I know, you know as far as uh, church history goes in a lot of churches and denominations that always has been, you know, you yeah. look at not so long ago, women were really kind of right. limited as far as just what they were allowed right. to do in the church. Right. And, but it sounds like Third Presbyterian Church, or now Grace Point, you know, long ago that women were, mm -hmm. you know, certainly, uh, what's the word that I want to, you know, as far as, you know, seeing the value of their ministry yes. And, yes. and not selling them short in any right. way as far as their leadership and ability. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right, and so uh, even when they made the switch of denominations, that was one of the criteria that they found a denomination that, that allowed women to serve as elders and deacons and pastors. And, um, mm -hmm. and so the, the, our elder board has always been made up of uh, very godly, very gifted, very strong men and, and women. And really the men is, is another strength of grace, but even to this day in the sense of um, there's a lot of, there's many congregations in America, especially the more older uh, aging mainline churches where you have a loss of a lot of men. And uh, Grace Point to this day still has really strong, committed, involved uh, men, both uh, serving and in leadership. And yeah. So. And so what are some of the emphasis, you know, because I know a lot of times, you know, I, you know, there's books out there and a lot of pastors and and the church is always concerned about the spirituality of men. Right. And how do you get men involved more? Mm -hmm. You know, not to say that, you know, as far as, you know, getting women involved too, that sometimes that can be a challenge. But, but as far as men goes and men's spirituality, I mean, is there something that you'd say that your church has done that has uh, mm -hmm. kept men active in ministry and what excites them? Or? Mm -hmm. You know, as far I know currently, and I don't think it's ever been true that it has been a, a, the fruit of a program or any kind of a particular model. Okay. I think it's really just been the makeup of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, I know one of the ministries that, that keep the, a core group of men close and growing is a men's prayer breakfast. And so uh, early Wednesday morning, they meet at a local restaurant. And, and that, you know, ranges, you know, there are 12, 15 men uh, just ironing, sharpening iron, encouraging one another, praying for one another, uh, discussing the sermon, which is why I don't go, because... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't go, because nothing godly happens that early, but uh, actually, it, it's just a great group of guys. And yeah, so, so I think it's just been that... part of the, of the, of, of the congregation uh, of... And, and, and the, the church, one of the things, you know, to speak in general terms, men want to do. They want to they get involved. They want to serve. They want to be out there. Uh, and the church has that as another one of its themes, really strong uh, missions, 
global, national, local missions involvement. So that's a place for men to come in and build things and fix things and serve and go down to Mexico and help build churches. And so okay. it, it's an avenue of um, the more masculine version of, of mm -hmm. service in Christianity. So Okay, so as far as your church goes, I mean, some of the history and some of the themes, you've had uh, strong women leadership mm -hmm. in your church and... But then also you mentioned now mission work, mm -hmm. yeah. and so you you mentioned like um, you know kind of a threefold approach yeah. of local, uh, regional, but then throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And so, like here in Dubuque, what would be some of the mm -hmm. the mission work that sure. that Grace Point does or gets connected, involved right. with? Mm -hmm. One of our longest term uh, ministries is our our, our food pantry. Um, I believe it's it's 25 years plus they've been they've been serving uh, Mondays a small committed group of faithful people who are just amazing how much work they put in and they're they've been doing it for all, for a long time and uh, nationally food pantries tend not to have a long uh, history shelf life <laughs> okay. because of the level of involvement and the level of labor mm -hmm. it takes and so that's that's really uh, a, a major uh, feature of Grace Point is they're out there serving 40 something families a week for over two and a half decades now. So that's- a, well, That's a, quite a ministry. It really is, it really wow. is. And- um, See, 40 families a week? Yeah, yeah, right. And they- um, That is a big- combination of using the St. Stephen's and then just whatever we can have donated. And, and it's done in, in, just in the name and the love of Jesus Christ, you know, so it's a great thing. Well, that's fantastic. So that's one of our biggest local ones. And then we do, uh, re most recently we've, we've done some, we, we, for I think a number of years now, backpack giveaway. So school supply giveaways. Is a oh, big yeah. Thing. So that's, yeah. you know, this time of the year as kids are starting right. to go back to school and how important. So yeah. like with a backpack so and then what are some other, th in just basic school supplies. School supplies, then. right, mm -hmm. right. And then we've partnered uh, with the local schools. So close to us is Audubon and Marshall, and so uh, relationship with the with the principals there, and, and the principal that will say, "And I have like ten kids that just really, really need boots." <laughs> Okay. And, and somebody will get up and announce it that Sunday, and by the time he walks out the door, he'll have boots to go take over there. So, very responsive congregation to mm -hmm. the to local needs. And so, um, yeah, those are the local things that come to mind. And, and, and then just events, mm -hmm. different events throughout the year. We try to just serve and bless the, the neighborhoods. It sounds like your church is really a blessing to your neighborhood. Try to be. I think they are. Yeah, I'd say really if really you've got a food yeah, pantry right. where you're serving 40 people, you know, 40 families a mm -hmm. week, and mm -hmm. then you're also doing the school ministry. And I, you know, sometimes I think it's, you know, churches can do, you know, just one thing very well. Right. You know, they've got something going. You know, sometimes I think we feel like we need to have, be doing. We got so many irons in the fire that you, you get so spread out so thin. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you don't do anything real well, but whereas if you just pick one thing and do it well, then you got right. something, and if every church were to do that. Okay, well then, you got some regional ministry that's going on too, mm -hmm. some regional mission work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of, 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 of national, so, so in a mm -hmm. country, uh, it's been mostly um, response-based. So when, when there was the different uh, tornadoes and hurricanes and things, we, we would raise, send funds through our, through our missions team. So mostly it's been that, just responding. Raising funds. Raising mm -hmm. funds and sending. Um, yeah, that's what comes to mind nationally. I know a lot of times when there's disaster, it's... So disaster, disaster relief. You know, it's thing, really yeah. important right. to have, right. you know, people going to volunteer to do cleanup and building, but what they really need a lot of is, is just a lot of funds. Mm -hmm. They need that financial right. support. And, and so that's good that your church is in tune to, it seems like it's more and more, I don't know if it's just my imagination or if we're just hearing about it more, but it seems like there's just getting to be more and more natural disasters all the time. Mm 
Yeah. So, yeah. You send, imagine you're fundraising, you're sending checks, right. and it gets to be a lot more than right. in these days. All right, well then, in, well, what you just look at in our recent history, we've had like Hurricane Tr Katrina, mm -hmm. and well then there's been well, you know, the Iowa ones. terrible yeah. disasters. Yeah. And, you know, Joplin was hit by the Joplin. tornado. Well, yeah, well then you look at you know, some right. right here in Iowa, some communities that have been hit pretty hard with tornadoes mm -hmm. and a natural disaster and things mm -hmm. like that. And then you mentioned like uh, global work mm -hmm. that you do have some mission teams that go and what, build houses in Mexico? Well, yeah, so there's two, two main things globally. So long history of supporting many missionaries around okay. the world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that would be a regional thing because a couple of our, the missionaries they support are national. So a Salomai Center. Uh, and so for a small congregation, the, the, our global missions team supports uh, 17, over 17 missionaries around the world, which is pretty amazing for mm -hmm. a congregation our size. And those, those are literally spread out over the world. 17 missionaries you help yeah, support. Right, right. Well, that's really something. It is. I mean, when you look at a congregation of your size, I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, you got to... A can-do attitude at your it church. It is, and, you know. So one, one of the one of our big, fun, important mission projects every year uh, is the Samaritan's Purse, the oh, yeah. Operation mm -hmm. Christmas Child, mm -hmm. and so we we average 150 to 200 boxes uh, a year. Yeah, uh, I'm familiar with Samaritan Purse, yeah, but for those who are not, mission. you know, sure. as far as that mission, Samaritan mm -hmm. Purse, what what exactly do they do? So Samaritan's Purse is, comes out of uh, Franklin Graham, and they ask people all over all the world to pack a shoe box full of Christmas things. Well, not like Christmas things, it's for Christmas, but everything from little yo-yo's all up to toothbrushes and practical things, and they get packed up and they get shipped all around the world to, I mean, hundreds of thousands of, of children all around the world get these boxes, right? So, wow. yeah. Well, it's exciting to be part of a ministry like what your church well, it has. Is. It, that, I mean, it, it just, I mean, these are touching ministries. It's touching and, ministries. And compassionate it's, ministries, um, ministries that, you know, are, are very much needed when people, uh, right. when they have disasters and things like that. Okay, so Samaritan's Purse, and then do you actually do go on mission trips then too? They do. And so our most recent one uh, is they have partnered over the years with the church, um, and I'll get the name wrong, but it's it's down in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, that's the closest I'll get. And uh, they've went down there. They try to grow every other year, uh, and uh, they actually help build the church there. And then during the year, help help uh, send money. And so the the next trip will be this coming spring break in March. They'll go again because it it'll be two years. And so team oh. will go down there and, and just help serve the church, VBS. And, well, how exciting. I can just see where it just sounds like there's so much life and excitement in your church and people coming is, together you know? and working together and being the church. And, and so, you know, this whole day and age where people are kind of skeptical and leery of the church or do I really need to be part of the church? Well, go to Grace Point Church and, and be part of the excitement. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it's just like, well, no, this is the way I want to be as a Christian, how right. I want to be. You know, to see the church active and, you know, being that light that shines in, into our world. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, September 13th, that's a Sunday. And is that the day that you're actually celebrating the 125th anniversary then? Is that kind of the official date? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, it is. And so um, what will happen on that day is we have one of our former pastors, one of our uh, longer term pastors, uh, uh, Pastor Hammer, uh, Hammer coming in and he'll do the service, he'll do the, the sermon that day. So the, the service is at 1030. And then during that service, there'll be different um, uh, special worship times and youth things and children things to commemorate, to, to mm -hmm. celebrate uh, the different milestones and to honor different ages and seasons of the church. And so uh, and then following the worship service will be a meal. And uh, following the meal outside will be 
I don't, so the whole thing's open to the public, and, and the outside time will be like a fair. So there'll be booths and things for different ages and the children, and, and there'll be live music, uh, and some more good food. And, uh, so just, we, we just want to celebrate uh, God's faithfulness through these dear saints for 125 years. Yeah, it just sounds like it's a really exciting yeah. time for your congregation. And, but it's also an exciting time for the, for the whole community. And so I think this is a time to, you know, for people to be able to go out and to celebrate with Grace Point Church, 125 years of God's grace, 125 years as I've been listening to Pastor English and, and just, you know, all of the wonderful ministry and what this church has given to the community, you know, to go out and to celebrate 125, your 125th anniversary and to, you know, if nothing else, to, to thank this church for all of its, mm -hmm. its steadfast, faithful ministry that it has done throughout, throughout the years. And so when I think about 125 years, that is, that's quite a milestone. It is. But, you know, maybe the best is yet to come or to say, well, maybe you've just begun. You know, it I, is. Grace Point, Grace Point is like the little church that doesn't know it's little. It just keeps going and going and going, and the ripples go all around the world, and we still have a really vibrant worship really vibrant men's ministry, women's ministry, youth ministry, children's ministry, and so uh, still strong, still going, still a great place to be. Yeah, it just sounds like the Lord is just going to continue to empower your church and we continue so. to use your so. church as a, an instrument of so many things, of, of serving and of healing and of life and togetherness and so, celebrating God's goodness each day. So 125 years and and so you just kind of build on that history yes. and, and they continue to uh, grow and serve as, as the years go by here. Well, I'll tell you what. So that's an exciting day here again. Sunday, September 13th uh, will be their celebration. And uh, the whole community is welcome. And uh, this, once again, is, is Grace Point Church. It's on 3100 uh, Windsor Avenue. And so I just want to thank you so much, uh, Pastor you. Chris for English, yes. For, yes. for being on the program today and, and to pastor such a special church. And yes. so and I want to I thank blessed. all of you for joining us this day thank as you. well.